the man that he told him, stretch out your hand. Go and sin no more. Every person that Jesus touched, he expect them to live a life in gratitude to him by service. That's how he gathered them. I touched you, come and serve me. I touched you, come and serve me. I touched you, you owe me. Come and serve me. I touched you, you owe me. Come and serve me. But we think it's crazy when God touches somebody and then we say, hey, God uses me to touch you. And then I say, don't forget this. Don't ever turn away from God. Come on, let's go and serve him. We don't like that. We don't like it when the prophet say, hey, go and sin no more. Don't ever miss church again. We think, who is he to tell me that? That's the pride of the heart. That you forget that it was God that touched you. And the moment you forget, you exalt yourself again. And now judgment is back upon you. That's one of the ways that people lose healing. You forget who it was who touched you. You know it was him who touched you, but you didn't give him what was due to him, which was your service, which is works. But we don't like that word works. Right? You know what is due to him, which is works, but you don't like that word and you forget. And now the judgment is looming upon you again. That was the story of Hezekiah. Let's go there. Uh, that's Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, um, chapter Okay, so the first thing, who cut down the people? Did the men cut them down or did the angel cut them down? Okay, amen. Yes. Same thing, when, when the angel comes, it's because the Lord sent them. <laughs> amen. So go ahead. Excellent. So we see God sends the angel to help them. But when he sends the angel, one of the things when you read back, as they were preparing to come against him, Hezekiah and Isaiah prayed and cried out to God so this shows us right here that prophets were working alongside government officials so if people think politics don't matter in the church they actually go hand in hand we just need the right measure of it amen this is what's happening they cry out to God God sends them great victory the angel of the Lord comes through the camp strikes every mighty man of valor God is nothing to be played with okay so God brings them victory when he brings them victory, they bring gifts to present to the Lord and presents to Hezekiah. Now, in those days, Hezekiah, <clears throat> excuse me, was sick and near death. And he prayed to the Lord and he spoke to him and gave him a sign. But Hezekiah did not repay according to the favor shown to him. Remember, I told you when God touches a man, he expects that you will work for him. Everybody wants to be touched by God. When God touches you, he expects that you will repay the favor that he has shown. You understand? For his heart was lifted up. So Hezekiah, when you jump at 25, Hezekiah did not repay according to the favor shown him for his heart was lifted up. Therefore, wrath was looming over him and over Judah and Jerusalem. This is why we have to pray for our leaders that they would have the spirit of humility, that they will possess the divine nature of humility, which is only found in Christ Jesus. Because without it, Hezekiah brought judgment on himself, Judah, and Jerusalem. This is why we have to pray for our leaders. Father, that you would save them. Father, that even in their day, even in their process, if they're not saved, help them be humble before you. Right? Help them not be exalted in their stature Because in exalting of their stature They bring judgment over the nation And over the people of God Then <clears throat> Hezekiah humbled There goes that word Humility He humbled himself for the pride of his heart He and the inhabitants of Jerusalem So that the wrath of the Lord did not come upon them In the days of Hezekiah Hezekiah is prideful in heart. He's lifted up. He's exalted himself. And then God says, hey, I touched you. You were sick. You should have died. And when I touched you, 
you were supposed to work for me. You should have repaid me for what I did for you. But because you haven't, now judgment is looming over you, Judah, and Jerusalem. Every man that Jesus touched, he expects that they would go live for him and serve him. You show me a person that Jesus touched and they don't live for him, I'll show you a person that soon will be under the judgment of God. The 70 that Jesus got, that's how he acquired them. Might. Congratulations. You now work for me. You have forget Jesus is a king. Congratulations. You work for me. That's my life. He saved me and we had a deal. That was it. The favor has been repaid. He will use me in whatever way necessary. Literally use. Like a rag. Throw me to the side until it's time to be used again. And I've committed to it because I have a favor that I repaid. He touched me. I will work for him forever. I want to be used by God to somebody ring your behind out, throw you off to the shelf. Uh, God, you, use me, Lord, to somebody ring your behind out like you nothing and throw you to the side until it's time to be used again. You understand? I understand that sentiment. And I'm unmoved. Because I go before him and I'm renewed with wings like eagles. Unmoved. Because I have humility of heart. Right? That was Hezekiah's problem. He was exalted in heart. Because he refused to have humility, judgment came upon him. Every man that Jesus touched, they went on in service to him. That's why Hezekiah, the judgment came upon him. You know that you were supposed to repay me for the favors that I gave to you. Every healing that a man receives is a favor because he deserves nothing but death. We think we deserve, uh, he, healing is the children's bread, but you deserve nothing but death. And you did not get it. So anything less than that is a pardon. Mercy. But then he bestows his loving kindness upon us. He bestows his grace upon us. He bestows the healing virtue upon us. And in return, he expects that you will repay me this favor by serving me. You will repay me this favor by working unto me. But we don't like that kind of stuff. We would hate to see someone on Instagram and they heal someone and they say, hey, never forget this. If you ever don't, if I don't ever catch you in church again, it's going to be a problem. And that ain't the ministry for me. Well, how about Jesus saying for you? Because he felt like if I touch you, you deal. I touch you, you work for me. That's the deal. I touch you, you work for me. Slave trade. I was a slave unto the devil. He bought me and purchased me. I now work for him. But we don't like that kind of talk. We don't like that, especially black people. We ain't no slaves. Nah, king, you are a slave. I'm a slave unto him. He purchased me because I was a slave unto sin. Now I'm a slave unto righteousness. I now work for him. He's my boss. The favor is repaid unto him. But they say, oh, you don't have to works. There are no works. No, there are works. The favor has been repaid by my work. I will always work unto him because I don't have enough to give him. That's why the deal is an unfair transaction. I get all of heaven for all of me, and I don't equate nowhere near that. So because I don't equate, he takes everything. You understand? Humility. Because I don't equate, he takes everything. But then we exercise pride and assume that we're greater than God. We exercise pride and we think that we're greater than God. We forget that we owe him. I told, I told, I won't say who, but I told someone, I said, hey, you need to record me a testimony video. They forgot what God did for them. They forgot. I said, you owe this to God. The only thing I ask is do this for me. And it was like pulling teeth. I never asked him again. And I'll leave it to your imagination what happened to him. I won't even say what happened to the individual. And this isn't somebody that hangs, so it ain't like we could guess who it is. All right, so let's just do that too. <laughs> People be like, you know, who he, who he put on Instagram and who this and this and this and this. I got testimony of those people don't even know exist. Right? So that, that, don't do that. Amen. <laughs> Remember, we protect and cover people, but these people you can't even uncover because you only enrolled. All right. But I told him, you have a debt to God. Men would see this. This is the highways and byways of today. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. 
This is the highways and byways of today. This is where we proclaim his goodness before men. This is where our light shine so our Father in heaven can be glorified. You don't want to record it? Fine. Tell God you don't want to repay him. And then I bless him. And then they come back. And I see what I say. Let me show you how God can fix this. But this is what you're going to do. You're going to repay God what you owe him. You're going to repay God what you owe him, which is your life. In humility, pridefulness exalted in the heart that you thought you were beyond that. You thought God doesn't need to be glorified because he touched you and it's between you and him when he thought the light that I put in you should be shown before all men that I can be glorified. Humility. We think humility is in speech. No, humility is in heart. And what's in the heart gets portrayed by action. James said, I will show you my faith by what I do. Well, you know, it's, it's intangible. It's the substance. Yeah, that substance has a physical form and it's the works that I do. You understand? That was the problem with Hezekiah. He exalted himself in heart, forgetting what God had done for him. The individuals that Jesus touched, they never forgot it. With the exception of the lepers who went. That's why Jesus told the lepers, the one who came back and gave thanks. He said, hey, where the rest of them? I mean, Jesus expected that all of them were going to come back. He expected that every last one of them was going to come back. Yep. So then he touches them. He says, where are the other nine? Then the one who comes back is made well. We think the healing starts there. God had touched them. Hey, go your way. You're cleansed. It's the one that comes back. He's made well. People get touched by God. They forget to come back and then they don't understand why they're not well. But then because of humility, remember I'm walking with God. I love mercy. I go to my knees and I pray for them. Father, is there any other way? God, perhaps we could do it again. God, perhaps we could do it again. Because they're looking to you. They just were foolish and did not know. They were arrogant in their hearts and did not know that you are the Lord God who possesses all and can take all. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. And now I'm going to teach them to worship God whether he heals them or whether he doesn't when they come back. If God removed or he does, I'm going to teach them now you have an opportunity because you're being humbled and brought low. You can worship God whether he does this or not. If he never touches you, will you serve him forever? Because the deal has already been made. You've been purchased from the sin of uh, the slave of sin to now a sin of righteousness. You've already been purchased. Your work is unto your new master. Jesus, oh, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus, the master Jesus. We say it not understanding. He's my master. When my master comes, I humble myself. Yes, boss. Yes, master. Yes, a master. Humility. They don't speak like that one to another. Why? Because there's no humility one to another. They humble themselves before the master. Humility. That was the problem with Nebuchadnezzar. He refused to humble himself. That's what Daniel said. When you read Daniel 4 and Daniel 5, Daniel said, or Nebuchadnezzar said, Oh, surely the wonderful Lord God, the one who lives, he knew who God was because of Daniel. Daniel being his slave, but Daniel possessing all wisdom and understanding in heaven and earth. Daniel, no one is wise as him. No one is prophetic as him. No one is more revelatory as him. No one as excellent as him. Right? The one who he talks about who possesses an excellent spirit and whom the spirit of the God is. The God of heaven dwells in him. Nebuchadnezzar understood that, yet he refused to still humble himself. He refused to still humble himself. And then, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Uparsin. God writes the judgment on the wall, speaks his language. Only Daniel can interpret because Daniel's the only one who speaks the language. Daniel's the only one who speaks the language. He interprets and says, you've been found wanting and in the balance. And then gives him space because God is a God of mercy. Looking for humility. Gives him a space to humble himself. Yet he does not. And at 365 days, pop, the judgment is fulfilled. Nebuchadnezzar turns into a bird. 
literally, literally. This isn't a figurative like, I saw one like the Son of Man. I saw one likened unto this. I saw one liking, uh, likened unto that, right? When it said that he has hair white like wool. His face white like they're using the best that they have to describe what they're seeing. Because there's no word that they have to describe it. That's what they're doing. So they're like, well, you know, Jesus said, said he got hair like wool. No, he has hair like wool, dummy. <laughs> he has hair like wool. He has feet like brass. You hear me when I share my encounters, I always say, I don't have the words to describe because there's no word here to describe it. There's no number here to describe it. There's no color here to describe it. There's no sentiment to describe it. Right? Nebuchadnezzar, the judgment comes. The watchers judge him. God doesn't even do it. The watchers say, you know what? He's done. Bop. You don't even realize there's spiritual beings that'll turn you into an animal if you don't repent. Yet you think you don't owe God a favor. You live like no one's watching, and that's the problem. Humility. Nebuchadnezzar thought because I possess the strength and because I build this great and vast kingdom, I am somehow outside of the judgment of God. The angel said, watch this, watch this, watch this, bop. <laughs> and then what my man said on Instagram, watch this, watch this, watch this. <laughs> hey, that's what it says. The watchers judged him. It says the watchers and the holy ones. We just think there's, everybody's an angel, though. There's different ranks and levels. The watchers respond. The watchers take rank from the holy ones. The holy ones give orders to the watchers. The watchers say, hey, we finna fix this. Bam. Nebuchadnezzar turned into a human with bird-like features. And at the end of his judgment, Nebuchadnezzar is removed. We never hear another Nebuchadnezzar again. But Nebuchadnezzar turned. Nebuchadnezzar turned. He humbled himself. But it took the humiliation. It took the being abased. It took the being brought low. That's what Jesus has done in my life. Brought me low. Because he's brought me low, I just take whatever. 